pandemic. We're going to have an update from South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster. Let's go ahead and send it to Columbia right now. Restaurant is closed. There is a malnourished person praying for something to eat. For everyone discouraged that they have to watch their religious service online, there's a person praying for the opportunity to freely worship. For everyone frazzled about having their children do schooling via the internet, there's a person praying for the, choice, the chance to learn how to read. God, we are abundantly blessed by you. And for that, we give you thanks and help us to remember that in all things. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining us. We will, we will of course, continue having these briefings uh, indefinitely to keep, uh, keep the citizens of South Carolina and everyone interested and concerned, fully informed. Uh, I have issued a new executive order today. One closes non-essential businesses in our state. We issued one last week that did that on some non-essential businesses. And now we've issued another to expand that. And this includes, this is starting Monday at 5 p.m., furniture stores, jewelry stores, department stores, clothing stores, shoe stores, clothing and shoe accessory stores, florist, florist, sporting goods stores, book, craft, and music stores, luggage and leather goods stores, and home furnishing stores. Such things as hardware stores, these are not included. Hardware stores, firearm re retailers, and home improvement stores are not included in this order. And all that will be made clear in the written order when it will be issued. But again, that will go into effect Monday evening at 5 o'clock p.m. Also, I have issued another order that goes into effect right now. And that is about short-term rentals in our state. I'm hereby suspending short-term rentals to persons from CDC, that's the Centers for Disease Control, identified places, hotspots, states, uh, from coming into the state uh, beginning right now, rentals starting right now, no new rentals of those places starting right now indefinitely. And that includes hotels, short-term rentals, motels, vacation homes, condominiums, resorts, bed and breakfast uh, companies, timeshare companies, but this specifically excludes people from any place that are military, medical, first responders, or commercial transport people. So those are the two executive orders, those are new. As you know, we are, we are taking a deliberate, steady, planned approach. We believe this is the best way, it's based on the science, based on the facts, based on the advice of the professionals, and we will go as far as we need to, or as advised, to keep the people of this state safe. And with that, Dr. Bell. Thank you, Governor, and good afternoon. We have now received reports of documented cases of COVID-19 in every county across our state. This includes 147 new cases as of today, which brings the total number of people confirmed to have COVID-19 in South Carolina to 1,700 cases. We are at the point where we are reminded daily of how serious this situation is and the obligation we all have to help prevent the loss of additional South Carolinians. Know that we are all in this together, and at some point many of us will likely be exposed to the virus. And the level in which the virus continues to spread will rely on all of our actions. We want to reassure the public that so many of us are working hard together as a team from the local to the state level and with national partners to protect the health and safety of all South Carolinians. As of today, we continue to work with healthcare facilities to stay updated on the availability of acute care beds throughout our state. And currently, we are at 52% capacity. We are working with our emergency responders on an electronic system 
that will allow them to determine if they are responding to a house where there has been a recent COVID-19 patient. This will give our first responders additional information to protect themselves appropriately. And we have provided a third round of PPE shipments to the counties from the Strategic National Stockpile. We know that this is a challenging time and what we're calling on everyone to do is not easy. We encourage all South Carolinians to take actions to protect themselves and those they love. Nearly every day we learn of a new case that is the result of an unexpected exposure or an unknown source. And what our current data shows is that social distancing and staying home helps combat the spread of this disease and ultimately saves lives. And so this must absolutely continue everywhere until we see a significant decline in these cases that is sustained. We are always mindful that each new case represents a real person. We anticipate releasing counts of confirmed and estimated COVID-19 cases by zip code later tonight. We will provide estimated cases at a later time, but those will represent those who are likely undiagnosed or untested. And by including estimates, we hope to better convey more meaningful information about the real risk of disease spread in our communities. We ask for your continued cooperation with following the guidance of public health professionals so that we can continue to fight on every individual's behalf. I ask everyone to please do your part to stay home and limit your close contact with others so that we can spread so that we can slow the spread of COVID-19 infections. And as always, for the latest information, please visit our webpage at scdhec.gov forward slash COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Davidson. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Governor. Uh, my name is Nick Davidson, and I'm the Acting Public Health Director at DHEC. Um, we have a, we've produced a couple products recently, and we thought it was wise to show you one of those products. Uh, we'll be making that available uh, on our website, and we'll be showing it here on the screen momentarily. The, the video that, or the animation loop that we're providing to you is an attempt to make it clear about the, case, the cases as they spread around the state. You can see in the video here that it starts in early March, and the cases begin to grow throughout the state. And as they progress towards 1700, you can see the heat map is uh, showing that progression uh, to the current date. So this is uh, this will be available on our website, and we really wanted to, we always try to do what we can to express the risk that people face if they don't take some of the precautions that we advise against. And so the opportunity here to see the spread, uh, we hope will be a sobering reminder of the need to take precautions as people go about their lives uh, throughout the day. So that will be available on our website this evening. I also wanted to talk about our efforts in our laboratory. Uh, we continue to be very proud of the work that our laboratory staff and officials are doing. We have worked at working on extent, we are working through extended hours. We're working seven days a week to do the testing uh, that we need to get done in the state. Uh, we're using even extended hours during those seven days and we run samples throughout the night as well when necessary. So we have not recently had a backlog. We currently do not have a backlog. We are currently working through a challenge where uh, we probably have enough samples, excuse me, uh, materials, uh, enough reagents in the laboratory to test the, the rest of the specimens today. And then some of the specimens that we'll receive tomorrow. Uh, but if we don't, don't receive additional specimens, we do anticipate going into a bit of a backlog scenario. So we're working with, uh, with our, our partners here in emergency management, with the governor's office, and with our federal partners as well, and the suppliers to try to make sure that we can continue testing. The last thing we want to do is have a delay, but I also want to be very honest and transparent with you that we are potentially facing a delay over the next uh, day and a half or so. We'll certainly let you know as that, uh, as that changes, and we certainly hope that we get some supplies in, but we don't have any scheduled for delivery, so we're doing everything we can to make sure that we don't have uh, any backlog. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Buck. 
Hello, my name is Jennifer Butler. I'm with the South Carolina Department of Mental Health. And as we've been talking about making sure we're caring for our physical health, we wanted to make sure that we drew attention to paying attention and care to our mental health. The Department of Mental Health is open, fully operational and functional across all of our inpatient facilities and our community mental health centers. This is a tough time for everyone. Certainly our patients who already struggle with anxiety, depression, isolation may have an exacerbation of symptoms. But those of us who may have not previously struggled with any of those symptoms may find ourselves now feeling anxious, feeling concerned and worried or uneasy. The Department of Mental Health and many other resources that they'll list on the screen are here to support you during this time. As we stay at home to save lives, we still need to stay connected. So if you are feeling suicidal, we urge you to call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK. We also have the Crisis Text Line, which is both of those lines are answered 24 hours a day by trained counselors. You text the word HOME, H-O-M-E, to 741741. The Department of Mental Health also provides South Carolina with a unique opportunity to respond to the mental health concerns during this time because of our statewide system. We have clinics in all 46 counties of our state. We are also able to roll out a community crisis response and intervention team essentially a mobile crisis that is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The number you see here for the 1833-DMH-CCRI, that is for that crisis mobile number. Call that if you need to reach out, regardless of whether or not you're a patient, any South Carolinian will be served. We also have resources and information about our clinics at scdmh.net. Again, please stay connected during this time. It's important that we not lose sight of each other, even though we may be physically a little bit further apart. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Stenson. Good afternoon, uh, Kim Stenson from State Emergency Management. I'm gonna give you uh, an update on uh, where we're at in terms of obtaining personal protective equipment. And that's uh, the equipment that's worn by uh, medical health uh, professionals and also by our first responders uh, to minimize the exposure to hazards. Uh, and this first slide summarizes the requests and current status. Uh, the top line kind of outlines in terms of what the categories are, those five general categories that we're tracking right now. The second line discusses uh, the number that have been requested in our system here uh, through emergency management. Uh, the, the next line is uh, what's been either ordered or in some cases donated. And then the last line there is what's been delivered so far. And just as an example uh, on the N95 masks on the left-hand side is that we've requested over 300,000 of them uh, through, uh, rather we've, we've been requested uh, to provide 312,000 of them. And then we've ordered almost 1.7 million uh, of those masks through various sources. And then so far, we've had a relatively small delivery of 82,000. So all those same way across the board there, surgical masks, uh, eyewear, uh, rather eye and face protection, and the gloves and the gowns give those uh, requested uh, what we've ordered and what's been delivered so far. Uh, you will see that in a lot of cases, we haven't gotten a lot of deliveries. This is a worldwide really issue uh, beyond just our nation. And of course, every state and every local authority is trying to obtain this equipment uh, uh, for the, during this time. So the next slide uh, is uh, basically uh, the strategic national stockpile that uh, Dr. Bell and, uh, and, and Director Ni uh, uh, Davidson talked about and basically outlines what we've received and distributed uh, the, those shipments in the last shipment that we received this week and I believe all of them were made today and now they're down at the local level so that the local authorities can further distribute them uh, throughout, their, uh, throughout their counties. Um, so this, uh, again, the five categories and there's uh, over 300,000 distributed in the N95 masks, over 200,000 of the surgical masks, uh, 97,000 of the eye and face protection, and over 400,000 gloves and 400, over 400,000 gowns. 
And then the last section at the bottom of the slide there basically is a representation of selected county distribution uh, using those uh, five major categories. And then uh, the last item I've got are the ventilators. Um, and this is a pretty simple chart here. Uh, far left, it shows the ventilators that we have here in South Carolina. Uh, the next uh, column shows the ventilators that are currently in use. Uh, currently, we have 87 requests in our system from some local authorities, uh, but we have requested uh, over 700 from FEMA and uh, have currently have not received any of those. And, sir, that completes my update. Thank you. Well, as you can, can see, there's been a lot of work done. We have a very serious situation, uh, but we are taking a deliberate approach. We have a, we're implementing our plan, which is influenced, of course, by new facts and information coming into us. But again, we want to urge everyone to stay home, stay home. We've emphasized that. Uh, things are, are safer at home than anywhere else. We also want to point out that despite our deliberate approach, when there's non-compliance with what we have asked, then we can begin mandating things. And that is why we're having this expansion today on these businesses that had not been ordered before. We need to see to it that we are, are carefully being as aggressive as we can. And that is why we're taking those steps today. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Governor, is there right going to be a third and a fourth wave of non-essential businesses closing? And I beg you, say it again. Will there be like a third and fourth wave of non-essential businesses closing? That depends on, as I say, the facts, the com rate of compliance, the advice, and uh, the science and data from the professionals, many of whom you see here and those they represent. And yes, sir. Why wait till five o'clock Monday? Beg pardon? Why wait till five o'clock Monday? Why not do this to right now? It takes some time to get things done. With the reservations, that, that is immediate. That goes into effect right now. The, my, my oral statement constitutes the order for right now, and it'll be published uh, very, very soon. But the other one for the businesses takes place five o'clock Monday afternoon. Yes, sir. You mentioned compliance within the state and people adhering to that request to stay at home. For example, this weekend, the Orangeburg flea market plans to be operational and functioning and lakes people are still going out on boats. Why not take the next step and just issue the stay at home order? We've when are, there are still uh, 10 we, states. Right. You're we have, 10 not to we have, we've already issued orders. Uh, mandatory that address both of the things you just mentioned. The law enforcement has the authority and during a period of emergency to disperse crowds like that. There are criminal penalties if it's up to the discretion of law enforcement. As you know, it goes in South Carolina, our statute goes down to as few as three people that are causing a problem uh, in health or otherwise. And as far as the lakes, we've, we've issued an order. It's mandatory on that, and all of those people are subject to penalties. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Governor, what would make you issue, or what would change that you would actually issue a shelter in place? As I, we are trying to, well, we, the measures that we have taken, uh, both voluntary and mandatory, contemplate staying at home. We are taking a deliberate approach. Our state is not like everyone else's state. Uh, Georgia, for example, has Atlanta. There are more people in Atlanta than there are in South Carolina. Uh, New Orleans, uh, the city of New Orleans has become a, a hot spot almost uh, in a very short period of time. South Carolina is certainly not New York. They're, every state is different, is, is different. They have different economies. They have different resources. They have different medical facilities, but we are taking a deliberate approach to be as aggressive as we possibly can at the right time. And we're following the data and the science to do that. Yes, ma'am. 